Hello and welcome to the Flix Forum podcast, where each episode we go back and we look at a Netflix original film in the order of release. Today we have Netflix 334th film from 2021. It's the cyberpunk action film called Outside the Wire. This one is directed by Mikhail Hafstrom and stars Anthony Mackie, Damson Idris, Emily Beecham, Michael Kelly, and Pelo Azbek. I'm Jesse, and I am your host. Thanks for joining me today. As always, we will spoil the film as we uh, we cover this episode. So if you haven't seen this film and you're keen on checking it out, give us a pause and come back a little bit later on because we kick off the show with the fast flicks where we do a quick little summary of what the film is all about. For me, I, like everything you read online is about the, the war that this film is about. But for me, this film is about a a desk soldier who needs to discover how to fight in the real field. That's that's my fast flick for this film. So a little bit different, a little bit left of center, but I think uh, that's how this film sort of landed for me. So that that's where we're at for this one. So how did this end up on Netflix? Um, that it was it was announced in June of 2019 with Anthony Mackie set to star and produce the film with Mikhail Hafstrom set to direct. We had Damson Idris and Emily Beecham who joined the cast in the following month of July 2019 um, and Michael Kelly and Plo Azabek signed on later. Filming did begin in Budapest in August of 2019 and it lasted eight weeks so I think there were some other areas of Hungary that uh, this film was filmed around as well. This film around the world, some translation. So in uh, Spanish, it's called Area of Risk in Portuguese and Romanian, it's called Combat Zone. In French, it's called Hostile Zone. In Czech, it's called Beyond the Line. In Greek, it's called Kill Zone. Hungarian, it's called Deadly Battlefield. In Japanese, it's called Danger Zone. In Polish, it's Inner War Zone. In Russian, it's Death Zone. In Chinese, it's Doomsday Battle. In Turkish, it's Battlefield. In Ukraine, it's Beyond the Border. In Arabic, it's Out of Range. And in Vietnamese, it's Dangerous War Zone. So a lot of those international translations have sort of gone on that combat zone, the war side of things with this film as well. The film did have a tagline. The tagline was Defiant by Design. And I think that's probably pretty important. I haven't sort of mentioned this, but this film involves... Uh, artificial intelligent soldiers, I guess, or robots, and and um, <clears throat> you know they're designed by the U.S. military, and and this film, I guess, we'll talk about it later, but this is a very uh, anti-war film, <laughs> which we'll, we'll discuss as we go. Uh, this was released on Netflix on the fifteenth of January, twenty twenty-one, and it was nominated for one award at the North Carolina Film Critics Association, and this was for Anthony Mackey. Uh, and it was for the Tar Heel Award because he studied at the University of North Carolina School of Arts. So that's what he was uh, nominated for for this one. On release on Netflix, this film was the most watched on the platform over its debut weekend. On April the 20th, 2021, Netflix reported that the film was watched by 66 million households during the first quarter. So some pretty big numbers there from Netflix, I guess, really from, from what we do usually see. What are the critics and audiences saying about this film? So on Rotten Tomatoes, it sits at 37%. That's on 92 reviews. So that is definitely rotten. So critics don't like this one. Audience, a little bit higher, but still 54%. That's on more than 1,000 ratings. So also not very well received. IMDb it's had 46,000 ratings. It sits at a 5.4 out of 10. So pretty mediocre there as well. Same for Letterboxd, to 2.6 out of 5 on 23,500 ratings. It's been logged by 32,000 people. And on Metacritic, it sits at 45 out of 100. That's on 15 critic reviews. So on that traffic light system on Metacritic, that is in the yellow section. And the audience matches it pretty much exactly the same. It sits at a 4.5 out of 10 on 69 reviews. So also in that yellow uh, traffic light system there. So general consensus, I guess, is not very good for this film. So what are my early thoughts for this one? Um, I mean, it's an action film. <laughs> That's what this is. It's a sci-fi action film. It's got some fine fight scenes, I guess, and, and some themes that are pretty decent, but these themes probably, they're not really explored well enough. And Anthony Mackie, his, his casting, I guess, it's kind of interesting to me because it sort of feels like he's playing this Marvel Cinematic Universe character in this film. That, and that's how it felt throughout while watching this. So it's it's Anthony Mackie. It's, it's who he is. It's, it's it, yeah, I don't know. It felt a bit weird. So anyway, let's talk about the character. So this film, as I mentioned in my fast flicks, I guess, Harp is, that, is, is the main character for me in this film. He's this um, drone pilot from America, from the USA. He's fighting this war in Europe from behind 
behind a, a screen in the Nevada desert in America. And, you know, his actions by being this drone pilot is that he's supported by these robot soldiers and they're called gumps, I guess. Uh, so, yeah, for me, this film, it's about him learning what war really is you know it's gross it's bloody it's gory it's painful and and he needs to try to make up for the mistakes he's made he's made by not understanding what is actually going on in the field i mean he disobeys orders but in doing that he thinks he's doing what's right and i guess that's that that question you've got to have with his actions uh he's got this girl back home which really means nothing in relation to the film but it is brought up a few times throughout the film as well uh so the other i guess the the opposite to him is Leo, who is this android um, that's been made by the U.S. military, and he, you know he's got these super sort of like Terminator-like powers. And the big reveal in this film is that he feels guilty for for being an American weapon, and he wants America to shut down its AI program. And that you know that's a very late reveal, but the two of them it's almost like a a buddy film where where they go on a road trip together across these war zones and you try and see like humanity versus robots but even that's not explored very well either the other sort of side characters we see throughout we've got sophia she's this resistance fighter uh, and she runs this refugee camp and she sort of pops up a few times just to help out and and state that she doesn't like the way america goes about sort of interventionalism and 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 it's sort of you know placing itself in world conflict uh eckhart is this captain of the mission who is literally there to give orders and uh victor victor koval he's the villain a russian villain who's trying to hunt down these nuclear codes i think he's in the film for a whole of five minutes and he's um one of the the gray joys from game of thrones i think that's that's where you'd recognize him from uh, the director mikhail hafstrom it's 22 directing credits quite a few he's swedish so a lot of swedish films but has broken into hollywood he did that um film for 1408 the Stephen King adaptation uh, he's done the escape plan film which had Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone and and also that horror film or the the um, religious horror film the right with Anthony Hopkins so done some work in his own right as well the scenes let's talk about some scenes in this film what do I enjoy uh, this one was hot this one was hard to sort of identify because yes it's like an action film it's one of those action films where it's either you talk about the set pieces and that's about, that's about it really so for me though there's this scene where uh, there's these Ukrainian hostages and harps trying to help them and rescue them and get them to safety and that's not too bad I guess except for sort of the conclusion where he's got to actually shoot someone and kill someone to to protect one of the civilians and he has this freak out that was a little bit lame the other sort of uh, the, the tension the final scene with harp and leo um harp enters this silo uh, and the tension there was really good as well so I, I enjoyed that but the things that i didn't really like there's a few of them i guess so there's a moment with leo and harp and they're in the car and they're talking about olivia who's um harp's girlfriend back home in america and you know leo's asking if she's faithful if he's faithful they look at a photo of her he talks about you know she's a hottie i just felt like it wasn't needed for a film in 2021 like you take her character out of the film and it doesn't change harp as a character he's still a dedicated soldier that wants to do the right thing you don't need this side story of him having someone back home uh the harp has all these flashbacks and visions of, of him struggling in the field and you know seeing people die and and you know there's lines about you know emotions can lead to mistakes and maybe humans aren't emotional enough like these just didn't work for me there's a scene sophia i mentioned her before she's the resistance fighter and there's a moment where harp is like at her base where she's got all these orphans and and he's watching these refugee kids play and she comes over and she's like how does it feel to see your work up close bombs destroyed their homes and then she walks off on him like a, a mic drop almost it was just not needed it was lame you could have just shown it through his eyes that the pain he was feeling um <laughs> There's a scene with Leo um, and Harp, and Leo says to Harp, you know, now you see your work firsthand in the field. You know, the same sort of thing that, that Sophia is saying as well. It's like, yes, we get it. He's learning a lesson. <laughs> He's learning a lesson throughout this film. I mentioned I liked the, the start of that silo scene before where, uh, you know, there was that tension of, of him trying to chase down Leo. Uh, but then it sort of goes downhill very quickly, especially when uh, Leo puts like this key in to set the nuclear weapon off. And we get this five minute countdown on the screen straight away with this alarm going off in the background. It's like, oh, do we really need that? It's just like, let it launch and let's see what happens. And then we have the, the end, this hero shot almost of Harp walking down the road, looking at this photo of his girlfriend, being told, you know, over the, the radio by Eckhart, how does it feel? You know, you've saved the world. Like, come on. Like, it was just a really poor finish to the film. 
Uh, but the themes and the ideas in this film, let's talk about those because obviously this is an anti-war film or an anti-war film. America, it's all about America. America getting involved in other countries' conflicts. That idea of the American war machine and and war is ugly and you know you need to get dirty to experience war and and you know countries are being um, destabilized by you know extending conflict almost and and they try to talk a little bit through the character of Leo about artificial intelligence and weapons and and drones and soldiers and and you know taking the the humanity out of war almost as well and and humanity is a big part in this film too because that idea of feeling feeling pain or or the idea of sacrificing um you know the few to save the many is very much like a Star Trek sort of quote there for those that know what I'm talking about with uh, Spock but that idea too of selflessness and and thinking outside the box and questioning authority as well and 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 more things about humanity too about doing the right thing and and not disappointing and and making up for the wrongs that you've done to make them right as well what did i take away from this film i think it's interesting i think it was very interesting and it was sort of you know um hard to watch this and not think about what's happening in in russia and, and ukraine right now because obviously this film came out in january 2021 as we're recording and releasing this we're sort of you know heading to the back end of 2024 but this this film is about you know russian terrorists trying to you know <laughs> get ukraine back 15 years into the future of, of 2036 i think it was and you know like in real life from the release of, of january 2021 it actually happened in real life 15 months later in, in feb of 2022 so it's sort of sad that this film um almost shows what's what's occurring in real life as well so i thought that was an interesting little thing that's sort of the subtext behind as you're watching this film questions ponderings what do i think is you know, there's a few things about this film i think you know I, i've said this before but i always watch films with subtitles and there is this scene so i'm watching this film with subtitles obviously there's a scene where leo is showing the map of the battle zone uh between russia and ukraine called krasny and on the map on the screen it's spelled k-r-a-z-n-y and in the subtitles, it's spelled K-R-A-S-N-Y-S. Just so lazy from Netflix. Like so lazy that, I mean, I'm not sure. They probably do a lot of their subtitles through AI as well. Anyway, but th- that idea that if someone is actually sitting there with the screenplay possibly while actually watching the, the, the film and writing down what people, uh, I don't know, it just, it, it really frustrated me. Um, other things about the plot, I guess. The the idea that Leo, he chooses Harp to, to be his buddy or be his partner, like, why i don't I st- i'm still confused was it just because he questions authority like or was it be- i don't know i i just didn't get a proper reason as to why leo chose him the other sort of thing i guess like considering that leo and sophia through by the end of the film we both know that their motives are that they want to see wars finished they want wars to be ended they want to see suffering stopped so how are they justified in that concluding moment where they, they, they're happy to see a, a nuclear weapon dropped on america to wipe out millions like how how How's that going to fix the, like what they're fighting for? It just didn't make sense for me. And and I sort of I was going to talk about this, I guess, before with the translations around the world with all the different titles, but the English title of Outside the Wire, first time in a while, I actually really like this title, I think, because obviously this is that zone that they have to travel to outside the wire of where they are. But I like the title more because obviously the idea of Leo being AI, being a robot, having all these wires inside him that idea of being outside the wire too with him as a character i really like that too so big tick for the title for me uh ready to wrap it up we give the films a rating out of five so for me i I haven't got much to say about this film and i've tried to sort of expand this episode out as much as i can i mean like it's not as bad as a lot of the reviews say um it's tough because it's nothing groundbreaking it is just like a generic film but it's okay it's still like a serviceable film that you can chuck on in the background it looks good you sort of see, you know, what you expect in this sort of film. So it's sort of middle ground. So two and a half out of five for me. I, I still probably wouldn't recommend and say you must watch this film, but it's still fine. So two and a half for me. We're on socials. We've got Instagram. We've got Facebook. We have X, which is formerly known as Twitter. The question, which I've sort of touched on throughout this episode, but does Harp actually learn from his mistakes? Does he go back to America? Does he continue his service for the country and does he learn from his mistakes? What does he do? Um, I don't know. I don't have an answer. Maybe someone else has has some thoughts on this. Let us know on the socials. We're back next week. We do have another episode next week from 2021. This one's an international film. It's the Indian trilingual family drama called Tribhanga Teddy Medhi Crazy. This one's directed by Renuka Shahani and stars Kajol, Tanvi Azmi and Mithala Pukar. Um, 
I have no idea <laughs> what we're getting into next week. But if uh, you know about that film, seen it, interested in hearing next week, uh, jump on board, give it a watch. Other than that, as always, uh, thank you for, for listening along. Hopefully you've enjoyed the episode and I will see you next week.